Yes. All right, cool. Um, another thing that I would like to see or try um, before we get started. Um, do you guys know about the, the reaction functionality for Zoom? Like the whole hand raising, thumbs up stuff? Yes? No. No? Okay. Not me. Um, are you on mobile or are you on desktop? I'm on a desktop. Okay. So if you look at the bottom of the Zoom window, um, there will be something that says reactions on the bottom right corner. Hey, okay. let's see it. Um, there's all, yeah, there you go. And then if you do that, yep, yep. If, every, if everyone could put a thumbs up, that'd be great. So I can see that everyone knows kind of how to do it. Nice, beautiful. All right. All right. Great. So we'll, we'll use that or try to incorporate that someday. <laughs> um, not, it might not be this meeting, but <laughs> it, for organizational purposes, it's going to help a lot. Actually, I've never used that at all. Is it, do you really? just turn it back on again if you want it off? Does it toggle or? Um, it's it's a, like on a timer. So you're it's on the thumbs up one is on a timer. Um, if you uh, do the raise hand thing, that stays. That lets you know, oh, hey, I have I, I would like to speak. So it also will arrange that by um, who puts their hand up first so we know fairly who, who, who goes next. I'm glad to hear that because I know that Davo, you can also, I, it used to be you could raise your hand. Oh, I think you still can in the participants, yeah. but maybe not. No, you can, you can. Yeah, yeah. Um, but anyway, yeah, that's good to know. Yep. Thanks. All right, so now that we've got that out of the way, hello, hello, and welcome to the Tech Expressionist Salon. I'm not quite sure what number this is though. So we're, we're gonna have to figure that out after the fact. Um, today is January 19th, 2021. My name is Devonte Bradley, otherwise known as Davo. And I will be the moder moderator for today's meetup. Um, Colin Goldberg, who is kind of the starter of this whole great event, um, is going to be our timekeeper for today. Um, <laughs> today's recorded session will be two hours with recording closing um, around 4 p.m. Eastern time. Um, it is now 2.06 p.m., so two hours-ish from now. Um, the salon format is as follows. Five artists will share on their work for five minutes each. Artists will, are welcome to share their screen if they wish to during their allotted time. After four minutes, you will get one, a one-minute warning from the timekeeper so you can wrap things up. Uh, when sharing, please introduce yourself and let us know where you are located. If you are interested in sharing your work with the group, please raise your hand by clicking on the icon labeled participants at the bottom center of your computer or phone screen. That's where I was going over before. Um, and if you raise your hand, I'll be able to see or will be able to see who wrote, rose their hand in what order. Um, after the five hours presentations, we will hold a 15 minute planning meeting where current and new initiatives as well as open commitments can be discussed. Following the planning meeting, the moderator will present me uh, several different possible topics for general discussion and the group participants will decide on, upon a topic. Um, for a minute at a time, the floor will be open for a discussion and with that, we will get started with our first artist. Um, I believe that is Ra, is correct? Because... I think so. Uh, yep. Yeah. I think so. All right, so Roz, you have the floor. If oh, Also, before we get started, if you would be so kind as to mute yourselves, or I will mute you so that you know, there won't be too many interruptions during the presentation. All right. Hey, hi, everybody. Are we done, Devo? Is that, am I yep. ready? Yep. Okay. Uh, hi, I'm Roz Diamond, and I live in Shelter Island, Island, a booming metropolis, 90 miles from New York City. Um, my life's been very much one of a New Yorker for many, many years, um, and I'm originally from Atlanta, Georgia. So if you hear a little Southern accent, that's still with me. And I'm, I'm actually liking Georgia more than ever right now, more than I ever did. <laughs> anyway. Um, so I think without further ado, I, I will say I've been in digital art almost by accident since arriving in the city, the pulse of it entered my paintings and all these squares started coming into my oil paintings for about 10, they'd already been occurring in Atlanta, but uh, I, I am someone who's gotten into technology, as I say, almost by accident. So I've rarely done anything that was cool in my life. I'm gonna go just right into it because the clock is ticking and just share a screen. There's so much to tell all you guys about this adventure, but I'm gonna go into one of my latest paintings. 
Uh, can I just go into it, uh, Davo? Uh, share screen. Okay. Uh, the piece was behind me when I was talking to you guys. Um, and I am really primarily, a, a, I'm, a, I'm a painting and drawing person. And yet working with this digital tool has led me into all sorts of adventures. This piece is called Sputnik's Sweetheart Love Letter for Sumir. And it's based on a Haruki uh, Murakami novel. And um, if you go in it, you can see, I'm in Photoshop, all the layers in this. And you can see this Ferris wheel and uh, even just this image and this, the, the layers within this image of this Ferris wheel. I hope you can see the Ferris wheel a little bit. Uh, uh, oh yeah, hold on. We're, I think we're, about. we got a bit of a technical difficulty going on. It's not actually picking up your screen. Oh, it isn't? No, it is not. Hmm, yeah. What's it picking up? You have to unshare and share. Oh, you know what? Oh, here we go. Guess what? There Ross, we go. There Ross we go. Share. Oh, give me a few <laughs> minutes of grace, will you, Tom? Sure thing. Give me a few minutes on the timer. <laughs> All right. No worries. Um, yeah, it's funny. I'm not much of a techie, but I have become one because of my response to a digital age with my paintbrush. So we're inside this painting. I'm going to um, just zoom. Uh, wait. Zoom back and forth. You can see the whole piece now a little better. Um, and I'm zooming into it and just saying that my whole ride in digital has been, I'm zooming in close. This piece is made at 300 pixels per inch and it is um, 48 by 36. So it's a one point and a half gigabyte file. But I feel like my whole life's almost been this, this Ferris wheel that you're looking at. Um, and it's called um, Lost in a City, excuse me. I'm, I'm having a little trouble here. Oh, maybe it's the screen share. Anyway, I'm zooming back, but I don't know if you can see the Ferris wheel here and the ones and zeros, uh, the word ASCII, which is uh, American Standard Code Interface is there. Uh, this was a very visual novel and I'm showing all the layers on the side here that are part of it and some of them are in folders. So there's hundreds of layers here. And this whole thing of working in pixels and with a digital edge has been for me as a, someone who paints and draws in this media. Um, I think what makes it distinct is it speaks to our age. You know, we all want to throw our computers out the window sometime, but it is, it, this is the age we're in. So there's a certain mark I get in painting and drawing this media and the multi-layered levels, which have led me into um, pieces that I call diamond scapes after working in this media 30 years. Uh, I, I created these pieces that are multi-layered paintings that you can go and see on the wall, like the piece behind me. And then you can go inside the QR code beside it and go inside the painting, inside all these layers that you're looking at that I make a story with on the right and code. I used to code all this by hand, but now I work with a young coder and I love working with him. I, it's funny, like I have a piece in the 9-11 Memorial Museum. It's one of my first diamond skates. Um, about uh, finding hope when all is lost. And I taught, I mentioned this to Don Mark, my programmer, and he said, oh, Ross, I, I was five years old then. I was like, oh, you know, we just, it's, uh, it's kind of nice how you can share uh, different ideas across uh, time and, and um, generations. Um, so um, just gonna go real deep into the piece again to show you all these, some of these layers going on. And sometimes I will buy things. If I want a high resolution uh, violet, I think I saw someone else use these little hearts the other day. I bought these because I, I always attribute everything in my works, everyone's attributed. So if I don't wanna go and make some little candy hearts, which is part of the story, all these pieces have stories, um, I just go and buy it. Uh, I'm gonna quickly switch to Chrome to just go inside. Here's a diamond scape that's at a museum. There's a picture of me and a couple other people with an iPad and we're interacting with what is like a very abstract looking piece on the wall and all the images I'm gliding across time. Now this might look like a slideshow, but what you're really doing is going deep inside this the image. The component of this diamond scape okay, up is it? It also has sound. And when people are at the museum here in Shelter Island at the Havens House Museum, they can go inside, the kids love this. It's almost like a, it's an education, it's, it's a painting, it's a serious work of art that works on many layers. And it's like diving deep into what I call the Z space of a painting, even though I'm using an analog interface to do it. And here is my information code over here, my source code that um, attributes everybody. I mean, I feel we're in the new uh, Gutenberg press of imagery and 
when words started getting getting excited after the church and everybody else owned words for so long and only kings could have words you know people started writing novels and they started attributing and they started saying this footnote footnotes this and this christian paul first wrote about my work um or got well she wrote about it she didn't write in intelligent agents in the first issue that i realized patrick lickie was very involved with too um, but she really got the diamond sketch of pale male and the concept. And she said, wow, you're footnoting, you're taking all those layers and footnoting it, um, everything. And it's true. And that's Rod, where I think we minute. open up the bouquet of art, of digital art to a larger expanse. Am I cut? Uh, you got one minute to wrap up if you want. And if you could, please paste the URL for this into the chat window. So people sure. can check oh, I it will. out. And you can see up here step 28 of Haven's house. We're going through it in certain steps. There are many more layers than that. There are hundreds of layers here. I took all these artifacts to make a, a whole story about this family. This was a commission and it's it's a permanent commission. And I've just had a second commission at that I just put on the wall at the Children's Museum in Long Island, where for the first time I loaded my brush with the kids' work and stories during COVID. That was a very challenging thing, but so fun and engaging. I'll put that URL up as well. And um, I just want to go to my finder. Um, let me just hide this for a second. Uh, let me get out of here. Oh, wait. Oh, I hate this. Okay, where am I? Let's get to the finder. I thought I would just show a few little things in my last seconds that I have. Um, I'll just open this with preview. Why not? Why won't it do it? Come on, open with preview. Hmm. That's weird. This usually works, but it's probably because I'm giving a talk. You know how that is. Um, cancel. Well, we're not going to show that part. I think I'm running out of time. But basically, it takes a little skip through New York. Um, um, I, I seem to have a stall here. Oh, maybe that's it. That might be it. Hold on a minute. Uh, let me try this one more time. Hmm. Um, it's weird. Let's see, this preview will open. Well, Roz is actually going to be telling everyone about um, an interview series that she's uh, organizing. So, you know, there definitely will be a uh, yes. a longer format <laughs> version of this where, where you can present, you know, more images. Um, and that's something that, you know, um, we're going to talk about after all the artists present, but um, that'll be an opportunity for, you know, anyone that's interested in both um, being an interviewer and being interviewed, you know, kind of like an interactive way that we can um, publish and generate our own material. So, um, yes, I'm very excited about that. And I can talk about this later at some other time. It just shows some of the things leading up to where I am today. Thank you for listening to me. I'm enjoying being part of this group and uh, onward and, and forward. Definitely uh, pay, paste your um, web address into the chat, Roz. So. I will, I will. And by the way, I named Damon, I named this process. It is a process for me. This, this is a very emotional media and it's very expressive, but it's also process. And so I named this process, this interactive painting process that is both a still painting and an interactive experience in a museum. Uh, I called it Diamondscapes because there are not many women um, who's, uh, who get known in art history and I'm putting it out there. And I think it's a good name because people don't know what to call it. All right. That was my All little right. feminist chat for the moment. Thank, thank Stop you, Rob. <laughs> thank you. Being a timekeeper is harder than I thought. <laughs> I didn't want to interrupt. Oh, thank you. I understand. I, I do. It's, I get it. It's, it's all good. All right, is Patrick in here now, or is he ready to go? I don't think so. I I messaged him just now over Facebook, but uh, I'm not getting a response. Um, well, that's not so, good. Uh, hopefully, all is okay with him. Um, so, what do you think? Should we just move on to the next artist that wants to present? Um, yeah, I suppose. Oh, uh, we have a hand raise. Um, Michael? Hold on. What's up, Michael? I just had a question for Roz, actually. Okay, go ahead. Okay, thank you. 
Roz, so in, in the interactive um, process that you have for going into your uh, multi-layered paintings, do you start at the full image? And then if you looked at your Photoshop layers, you like strip away layers and go deeper and deeper, or is it a different process than that? It's funny, it's, it's I, I do a big storyboard on the wall. I mean, okay. there, it's, uh, I tend to work kind of multi-level um, and I put, I'll put a big storyboard on the wall of like an X and a Y, like a math chart. Gotcha. And, and I start, and, and I already have the idea in mind and it unfolds. And at the same time, I'm already starting to work with my coder. I can't remember exactly, maybe the first one that happened, I think it built as a painting but I had just done a course on iconography, uh, medieval iconography, um, after going through a very dark time uh, after 9-11. And, and I, I wanted my paintings to, to say more like icons do, not necessarily religiously, but yeah. but to, but I am a spiritual person, but to, to bring them into the painting symbolically. And so that one just erupted and the la we have the layers, so why not share them? You know, every artwork has a story. Like Picasso said, yeah. I'd love to lift up my paintings and and let people go inside and, and that's what I'm doing. But sometimes it's nice just to see a painting. So there's that too, you know, on the wall. Okay, um, I just wanna let you know, you just inspired me to some new thoughts. So thank you. I love that. I love sharing. I love sharing. I, I think it's what it's all about. And that makes this medium very exciting. Yeah, thank you. All right. Thank you. Thanks for your question. All right, now moving right along, I believe since Patrick isn't, around. Um, I guess we'll go into the next artist that was planning on presenting, which I want to say was Lucy, correct? So I'll go ahead and unmute you real quick. Right. Yes, hi. I would like to introduce myself. I'm uh, Lucia Krarikova. I'm from uh, Czech Republic and I'm still an artist student at Academy of Fine Arts in Prague. And uh, I would like to show you my, my process. So I will share my, my screen. Yes. Do you see something? We do now. Yep. yep. Perfect. So um, my process includes many steps because I don't know why, but I enjoy those, those steps and I, uh, I'm, I'm happy with that. So I'm starting with uh, taking a picture. Uh, then from a, from a picture, I making a pattern. These, these pictures I'm, I'm, that I'm taking, the, the main motive uh, is really important to me uh, because it's connected with, with food and some kind of, I don't know how to say it, enjoying life or um, bit of bourgeoisie there you can see here you can see um, Prosecco and like Prosecco pattern uh, then with these patterns I work uh, in two ways one way is digital uh, I'm making like things which are connected with mm, with the with the thing on the photo, and um, the next the next step is um, is working with the pattern like manually. So I'm printing those patterns also um, also on, on fabric, and then I'm sewing and um, I'm trying to to do those things also um, in my hand. This, um, my, my latest things are a little bit connected to, um, to fashion, to history of fashion, because um, it, it reminds me a little bit like corset. So um, there is something specific for me between food, between hedonism and between like being the pretty Instagram girl, slim. And so the corset is like, uh, the thing which makes you slim and then there is pattern. So um, I can show you other things. So um, the first thing I started, there was my, my body photos. And from that, I also made 
the pattern. Sorry for my English. Uh, I'm not um, talking really much now during quarantine, but uh, you can ask me if you want, if you have any questions. Um, Lucy, if you could um, paste, maybe paste your website address into the chat window. Yes, yes. Um, and people could check out your site. Does anyone have any questions? We still have a little time on the clock. Um, I can just click through the the other things. So are you making garments um, or wearable items out of um, all these designs? Uh, yes. Yes, yes. Um, here you can see like canvas and I'm trying to paint all over. Um, so yes, I'm making uh, canvas. So then are you, after you do this process, you make something to, to wear on clothing? Mm, I'm, um, no, 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 not really. I'm trying to work more abstract uh, not really like clothing, but I'm uh, quite um, inspired by clothing, by fashion. Uh, but I'm not really trying to make something you can really wear. Um, for me, more important is the process. And like these printed, printed garments are important for me because my parents uh, have factory which prints those materials, materials like that. So I basically grew up in this company and I saw all these possibilities, uh, all, all things, materials you can use, you can print. So I was like, oh my gosh, I need to use this in art. I wanna be artist. I want to use all these technologies. So I'm, I'm still trying to connect those, those things together and make something which which has meaning for me, which, which is important for me. It's very, it's very, very interesting. And I was really intrigued by the um, bottle Prosecco that you used or champagne that you made um, uh -huh. um, a bodice, a, not a bodice, but a, um, what was the garment you made out of it? Was a, the, the corset? <laughs> corset, thank you. Yes, the corset. So yes. There's something I, interesting. I also have like like I'm, I'm working on those <laughs> quite right now, like bigger things, but they are not, not photoed. Uh, so. The, I just think that the intersection of like um, the critical idea about using this luxurious item to make something that's restrictive that you end up wearing is really interesting. And I encourage you to keep exploring that in other ways because there's something very interesting about these things that you, are extravagant, like the champagne or the really lovely bread with the fine cheese that you make for sustenance and enjoyment, but also contributes to something that is restrictive and desirable to be seen by other people, but maybe not to be worn. So if you thought about some other elements that could be really, other wearable elements, it could be really interesting as well. That's just an idea. I think thank it's beautiful. You. Thank, you for, thank you for an idea. It was, thank you. <laughs> yeah. Thank you so much. All right. Um, in the interest of time, not, not that I want to discourage discussion, um, I think we might want to move on to the next presentation. So I think Patrick just showed up and he was supposed to be number two in our presentation line, but he's here now. So I'm going to go ahead and unmute him. Or try to. Hey, Patrick, you there? Yeah, I'm here. Yeah, yeah. All right. All right. Good. Then. Yeah, I was, I was uh, having a little issue finding the link. So uh, that's, <laughs> and so we're all, we're all right. Uh, we're in the middle of the, my first day of classes here at Winona State in, in, in Minnesota and watching my dear wife, Nagin, across the line for a little bit. So that's the, that's the thing there. So anyway, um, let's see. So, I mean, I have, um, I have five minutes to kind of talk about, um, what's what's happening here yes mm -hmm. yep. okay so um 
it's here. So shall I, shall I just get to it? Yeah, just dive right in. All right. So, um, well, first introduce yourself, of course, and okay. yeah, um, where oh, you're at. Yeah, yeah. sorry about that. Yeah, I've, I've been involved with these things, you know, you know, since the beginning. So I just uh, all of a sudden assume everybody knows me. Um, hi, my name is Patrick Oakty. Um, I've been in. Um, I'm originally from Akron, Ohio, born 1962. But the thing is, I've been in uh, new media art and technological art for probably about the last 30 years. Uh, I've been part of collectives like. Art Mark, The Yes Men, Pocha Nostra, um, Second Front, uh, Manifest AR, and um, now it's Expressionism. So, um, and um, let's see here. Um, I have a, I have a, I, you know, couple, couple credentials on the, um, on my, on my thing here. So let me just get, let's just get to it. Um, okay, let me get to the beginning. So anyway, um, that's me kind of talking about this idea of uh, expressionism uh, since 1994, which I've actually been doing. So it's interesting coming back to this. Uh, kind of my background, I used to be uh, editor of Intelligent Agent at the Whitney Museum of American Art from about 2000 to 2012. I've been part of uh, groups like Art Mark and the Yes Men who were at the Whitney and Venice Biennials um, and then uh, with um, Cal Fay at the uh, Yokohama Triennial in 2009. And my group's second front was at the, um, let's see here, at the Performa um, Biennial in 2009. And I had a show at the, um, let's see, what is it? The, the National Portrait Gallery of, of um, Canberra in um, Australia, blah, blah, blah. You know, in other words, basically just been around doing, you know, been involved very much in the re, in, in the idea of creativity and and the notion of mediation in the idea of like how things translate from one way to another in the media. So what was interesting is that when I really got serious about becoming a contemporary artist was about 1992, um, and it was it was interesting because of the fact that. Um, I've always been an artist. My mom was an artist. Um, I was raised as such, but you know, I was basically forced to an engineering degree and I kept painting. And the interesting thing was, is that at the time I was really starting to get interested in a, in a theoretical base of my work. And I read Kandinsky's Point in Line to Plane to, uh, and uh, Concerning the Spiritual and Art. And I basically stopped looking at all art except reading Kandinsky. And I started doing work based all, only off of the theoretical framework of Kandinsky's work. And you can see it's pretty derivative. This is 1993, 1994, done on a 286. Um, but, the, but the whole thing is, is that nevertheless, it isn't quite Kandinsky and there's something in there of me, but working under his the uh, theoretical framework. So things kept moving further. This is about 1994. Um, and you know you can see that there's a real divergence while I keep kept working this idea of expressionism in a digital format, and um, you know working with line working with color, still very much influenced by Kandinsky. Um, but one of the big things that really split is that when I started working with um, what uh, Roman Verasco, uh, an artist in Vin in uh, Minneapolis would call algorithm. In other words, using code to kind of work with the notion of affect and emotion. And I did this by custom coding series of rovers um, that uh, started, you know, that I started interacting with and started shaping, you know, their mark making. And this is a piece called Man Machine Interface that I did in 2003. That was uh, 107 inches by, I think, seven meters long. Um, basically, what's going on here is that the red marks are me and the other things are the, are the rover. But the thing is, is that it responded to obstacles in the area. So what happens is that I was moving the obstacles and sort of dancing with the robots. Uh, in 2010, I did another performance at um, Antenna Gallery in Chicago with these, but I don't have documentation of that. There's a video of that online. Um, so the next part of that 
really got into this idea of trying to work with the notion of form and line with, you know, with, with machines. And this is uh, part of a show that I'd had in um, uh, New York at the, at the yard in 2015 call, uh, called Sens Sensible Concepts. And this was a piece that I called Random Internet Cat. And it was really just the idea of trying to deal with um, internet culture while still doing, dealing with this idea of my partnership with, you know, emotional, affective, you know, partnership with, with the tool and seeing what I could do with it. And then also trying to deal with um, working with the form a lot, uh, you know, by basically working with these ideas of separations and, and um, you know, different, different, um, different media. Um, so there's one other piece that is kind of in between there is that I did a series of, of express, expressionist calligraphies at the uh, Virginia Center of Creative Art in 2007, which are very much like these. Um, but the thing is, is that I've always been very interested in the idea of semantics, um, you know, the idea of meaning. So the thing, and I, my second language is Japanese. So what happened is that I sat down and I thought, what if I took my background in Japanese calligraphy, looked at this idea that I was very interested in the idea of ex, you know, expression through, you know, and this was all done with painting and then look at it as if it was uh, um, kind of almost from an alien perspective, like that, that design book, the uh, Codex Seraphinus that, you know, is, is, uh, asemic, um, you know, with, you know, that's kind of between meaning and not. And um, that was coined by a friend of mine, Jeff, Jim Leftwich in, uh, I think, 1998. And I got really interested in this idea of, um, you know, like um, expressionist, you know, asemic expressionism. So basically, this is a pro ongoing project that I've had call, uh, called um, Personal Taxonomies, which is currently about 600 um, um, calligraphy, you know, basically non-representational calligraphies that I've been putting into um, GANs, AI systems, and then coming up with these generated, um, these generated pieces, which are basically trying to pull out the patterns within my creative process to kind of basically use AI to look at the affective quality in my work, trying to see what's see what's maybe the soul in the machine. Um, so you know, in general, that's what I'd been doing for about two or three years. There's um, you know a lot of um, there's animation to it, but the thing that's interesting is that I've been taking this work and going back to that original work in my. Um, a partnership with Colin in um, in the in in the collaborations that we've been doing, and also in conversation with Nagin. Um, this is one of the pieces that um, I've actually been looking at the idea of uh, using the Playform AI system and literally painting using my iPad, uh, using a drawing and then using a style transfer. Basically, taking like a drawing and then sending it to the AI system with um, an expressionist palette, but then layering it, you know, with these calligraphies that I've been doing and then sending it to Colin, he has his approach to it. And we've been layering and layering and layering. And the last piece that I've been doing, this is a, this is a shawl that's actually um, uh, in a show that uh, Nagin and I are in, in, in Tehran. And um, basically it, incorporates elements from the Playform system and these, these calligraphies that I've been doing and really trying to look at it almost in a um, illustrative design quality, but also the thing is, is that nevertheless, looking at the emotional affective quality of how, um, I'd say like how my interaction with the machine translates that affective quality into the digital. And, um, you know, while I tend to be a highly, 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 you know, almost, um, you know, right brain theoret, I mean, left brain theoretical person when it comes to a lot of my work, the one, the thing is, is that with this kind of text expressionist impulse that I've been, um, you know, working through as, 
as a um, as a problem, not as a problem, but as a question, which is all, what all my work is. I'm always working through questions in my mind. Is that I'm really kind of looking for it, looking for this ghost in the machine. You know, it's like where is my where where is the human part of my expression in the use of use of technology? You know, in, in other words, as a digital native, as a technological native, which I am. Um, now I'm saying like. Why am I using this as opposed to doing plain air um, watercolor, which I'm personally perfectly capable of doing? But the thing is, is that I'm I've been looking at this as an exploration of what my voice really is as a digital native, as a technological native, as someone who's been, you know, basically involved with creativity and technology probably since the the late '60s. And then, um, you know, basically, you know, during the 70s, you know, working with electronics and painting and all that sort of thing. And then and, uh, started drawing on an Atari 800. And, you know, really kind of, you know, in this, you know, early period, you know, working on uh, Amiga 1000 and, you know, basically about the same time as contemporaries like Gartel were. And, you know, just kind of, you know, at the time and just, uh, and, and most likely Roz and, you know, just, just, just a matter of saying, how has technology been able to, um, you know, be, you know, basically able to give me a voice that's specific to my experience as, you know, a human being and the, the specific context of my life rather than any other medium. And um, that's sort of what I've been doing, you know, with this. And it's, it's very interesting is that Colin and I, you know, went, went to grad school together and, you know, this, this conversation sort of started a little bit back then. And it's interesting to see, you know, looking back throughout my entire career since like the early nineties and seeing how this actual impulse of looking at you know, the art historical context of expressionist art has really had this resonance in, in, in my work uh, um, for probably 26 years. So anyway, I hope that wasn't too much of a, uh, a stream of consciousness, but, uh, um, you know, thanks for letting me, ex you know, share this work and, uh, um, you know, I hope that you find something in it. All right, awesome. Cool. Thank you, Patrick. Yeah. All right. So that was Patrick Lichty. Um, we do have two more um, participants for today. Patrick, I if you want to um, paste your website into the chat yes. so people could check your work you out. Know what? Definitely okay. What I'll do is that actually probably what's much more relevant at this point is uh, uh, probably probably my um, Instagram um, um, hashtag. So, okay. yep, because yep. my 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 website is a little bit old. We'll have a, a new one on <laughs> in uh, in a couple months. So, okay, awesome. All right, cool. Um, all right. Well, thank you for presenting, Patrick. It was a pleasure. My pleasure. Um, I would like to hold questions for you during this time, but it, uh. In the interest of time, I think we need to get on to the next presenter real quick. So, but if we have time later, I'm sure we could have you have the floor again. Awesome. All right. So, in the next, um, oh, hold on. How do I? There we go. Um, the next presenter, I believe, is going to be. Uh, where are you? Just saw you, Leslie. I believe you were the next supposed to be the next presenter after, um, or originally you were supposed to be the fourth presenter. I believe. I I don't know. <laughs> but um, yeah, well, you can. No. <laughs> yeah, you can go ahead and get started if you like. Um, just be sure to introduce okay. yourself and where you're okay. from. And so, work on sharing the screen. Um, I think I just want to share my whole desktop. So my name is Leslie Kell. I live in Austin, Texas. Well, actually, I live in Manshack, which is a, a little suburb of Austin, not too far away. 
And yeah. um, uh, I started developing this technique about 12 years ago. I had um, came to art as basically a child and went to art school and did the drawing and the painting and all the all that and then had uh, the, the need to make a living. <laughs> and so I, uh, um, when my first son was born in 94, I quit my job at a magazine as a designer and went freelance. And over the course of the next 10, 12 years, I uh, learned a lot about Photoshop and I became fairly comfortable in that space. And when I wanted to come back to art, because the kids were grown and the freelance world wasn't quite as demanding as it was at one point. And um, I realized that my paints were all dried up and my office had, my studio had turned into an office. And in the meantime, I'd taken up photography, which looking back, I was probably a photographer my whole life because all of our family pictures are, don't have me in them because I was the one taking the pictures. So I set about this uh, photo. It's kind of a melding between um, photography and design. And this is one of my most recent pieces. I work in collections and they are, um, this particular piece, collection is called the Lumen Collection. And the, uh, let me zip over here and show you. I pulled this up to show you kind of some of my process. So I start with a, a series of designs and I mean, I may do 10 or 12 drawings and then I start picking out the ones I wanna actually translate into pieces. So I often work on three or four pieces at a time. And um, here's, a, here's an example of, I take all my own photography. I only use my photography. Um, and um, so these, here's some examples of some of the pieces in this um, particular piece. There's always little, little creatures in my pieces. These, this is a detail of it. And um, you can see there's three little red cardinals in here. And so all everything, um, there's always a lot to see. And a lot of what my work is about has to do with light and reflection, but it also has to do with perceptions and adjacent realities and trying to create something that's familiar, but maybe you can't quite put your finger on it, kind of like a dream or something along those lines. So, oh, it just started raining, cool. Did I mention we're in Texas? It doesn't rain here much. So um, I'm gonna switch over here and just run a couple videos. I hope they run. This is Mystic. So I'll mute that. Yeah, there we go, here it comes. So then um, as I went along, I, uh, so I do the still pieces and then I print them and sell them as, uh, you know, I could get into more on, print on demand and things like that. But one of the things that I've really enjoyed doing in the last couple of years are these uh, cinemagraphs that I was at a show one time and this lady came in and she said, well, these are beautiful, but can you make them move? And I said, well, I know nothing about video, but sure, why not? <laughs> and um, I did a little crash course in but at this point, at that point, I was using Photoshop to do these. This one is done. Um, I created the butterflies. Well, they're actually real video of butterflies, but I isolated them and created the loops in After Effects. And then I uh, layer it all in Photoshop as if it's a uh, just another layered piece in Photoshop, but with a timeline. And it's it's really gratifying to um, make them move because I always, I see the movement when they're not. So to actually share that vision is uh, a lot of fun for me. So um, let me just, 
Oh, look, it goes really fast because I know this is a five minute video, so I don't want to make it. Uh... So I uh, travel a lot as much as I can, not right at the moment, but um, because I do use all my own footage and my own photography, I, I have to actually go to the beach. It's a tough life, but I manage. And um, so these at the moment, I'm, I'm planning a digital show right now in uh, an art center near here. And I'm gonna have uh, TV screens with these running. And at the moment, they're also showing at 10 gates at the Austin airport. So um, here's another one. It's been quite a learning curve to learn how to do them and the video end of things and it's a lot of fun. These little stripy things were, I had to figure those out, but let's see. And I think, let me show you real quick. I don't know how much time I have left, but let's go with this one because, and this is my other side collection. So these pieces, this is a fairly recent collection of mine. These have to do a lot with um, the unseen and the fact that there's just always more to the story than what you see in the beginning of things. And, you know, like with a pyramid or an iceberg, there's always more under, the concept came from icebergs, but I use pyramids graphically. There's always more under the surface and more to the story and a structure like this, you can never see the other side until you walk around and look at it. So that's kind of what this series is about. So um, not sure I have much more to say. <laughs> at this All right. Moment. Well, um, thank you. Thank you very much for presenting. Does anyone mm -hmm. have any any questions for Leslie or? I can stop the share, make up a little time. Leslie, do you, you nice. have a 3D program for the, the trees and things like some of the No, I'm, I'm actually drawing those in Adobe Illustrator. Cool. Okay. All right. All right. Um, thank you, Leslie, for presenting. It was a pleasure to have you. Um, we'll be moving right along into um, our last presenter for the day. Um, or for the for the meeting rather, um, Anna Hammer, are you are you ready? Are you, did, you, did you change your mind? Did you still want to present today? Or oh, hold on, hold on, you muted. <laughs> muted. Um, I can share. I think I can share. Um, my work is not moving or anything like that. <laughs> no, I mean that's fine. We have we have all sorts of different artists here. It's, it is quite okay. alright. Wasn't there someone else that had spoken up? Uh, I think you, I mean, there is somebody that would want to go today if you're, if you don't feel like you're ready, but it, it's the balls in your court. Who's the other one that wants to go raise your hand? Uh, Moses, I believe. Did you, did you change your mind on that front? <laughs> yeah, I know yeah. Carmen and Brandon both, um, uh, messaged me and asked about presenting. So, I mean, if, if someone feels like they want to jump in it's up I will to you pass, guys I will pass to give to people who actually sent a message ahead of time so thank you uh, no i think everyone just kind of <laughs> showed up so i mean i know carmen was here early uh, carmen if you want to go um by all means you know, <laughs> kinda... well, um thanks for the pass anna <laughs> All I'm right. Been staring at Anna, Her, your curls are gorgeous. <laughs> <laughs> I, I just sent a private message to Davo, and I was just like, "If I can't present today, that's okay because my faux hawk is not cooperating." Um, so it's it's all good. Um, okay. Um, great. All right. So just a little intro about who you are, where you're from, and then you can go ahead and uh, present. Okay. Um, well, my name is Carmen Moses. I am from Augusta, Georgia um right in the middle of Augusta Georgia I'm actually downtown right now in my uh in my work slash workshop um I go by Payasa on as my art name um which is Spanish for the you know the female version of, of clown 
uh, which if you know me for five minutes, uh, you'll go, oh, okay, I get it. <laughs> so um, let me pull up my screen and I will show you. I actually just closed out of everything because I'm like, oh, I'm not going to present today. <laughs> That's what you get for making an assumption, right? Um, okay, so let me uh, remember how to use technology very quickly. Um, there we go. All right, can everyone see? Awesome. Yep. Uh, so I think my Instagram is probably the best uh, way to kind of see the timeline of how I started developing my work. Um, it really kind of started in college. I went to uh, Augusta University, ooh, ooh, represent. Um, and uh, I was kind of a, uh, I kind of considered myself a lost artist at this point because I knew that I loved art, but it was always in my head, well, you got to make money, so you can't do art. Um, and that was the biggest disservice I think I ever did to myself. So um, I went back to school and I started to, um, at, at Augusta University, paint, uh, sorry, printmaking and digital photo uh, photography are like the same track. So I took that track um and started dabbling in digital photography and printmaking but like it wasn't clicking like my work was like just okay um and then as i got into screen printing um this is not mine this is my daughter's right in the middle of my instagram um but as i got into screen printing um and combining that with digital photography uh it was it was a breakthrough it was a very huge breakthrough for me so um about that time oh i'm already logged in aren't i not oh, okay <laughs> Maybe next week would have been better. <laughs> oh, and now I have to remember. Oh, good. Oh, okay, to the website. We're just gonna go to the website. Ah, da, 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 da. All right. <laughs> so I'm gonna go to my website instead, um, since Instagram wanted to boot me out. But um, I started to combine uh, these processes in Photoshop of of uh, uh, like taking, uh, like Leslie was saying, taking you know my own photos, my own stock photos, and things like that to apply to my work. Um, so I guess I'll start with the photo gallery and I'll try to go through this very quickly. Um, so this is probably the best uh, definition of what I started doing. I started doing these sort of photo manipulations um, and I was, I kind of became obsessed with technology um, because at the time I started, you know, teaching and talking to younger kids and stuff like that. And they're like, what's a VHS tape? And I'm like, oh my God. <laughs> so I started thinking about the role that technology has in our lives and, um, I also started studying uh, Renaissance art um, pretty heavily. So I'm just scrolling through while I'm talking. Um, so uh, religious iconography was really huge as well. And I started to think about uh, the idea of artificial intelligence and reverence and, you know, would we be God to an artificial intelligence and all these like really big questions that keep me up at night. <laughs> and uh, it really started to influence my work. So printmaking became my primary language. Um, so my first kind of full show or full collection, I called uh, Spiritual Biotechnics. Um, and they just basically, these are all prints. Uh, this one in particular is monoprint, uh, monotype and screen print. Um, just kind of exploring the ideas of uh, religious reverence and, you know, instead of having a regular tablet, what if they had an iPad, you know, just like, hey, Judas, come to the meeting. Okay, maybe not, you know. <laughs> um, I also drew a lot of influence from many world religions and I kind of had this obsession with uh, televisions and television schematics. There's something really beautiful about a schematic to me. Um, just all of the lines and the words and things. So I tend to use those as layers in my screen print a lot. Um, this one uh, was pretty recent. So like St. Lucy is the patron saint of the blind. So I had her with an Oculus and an iPhone and um, just like some really, really crazy stuff. And sometimes I look back on it and I'm just like, what was I thinking? <laughs> but <laughs> it works. Um, and then taking pieces of older uh, sort of Renaissance paintings and kind of creating these sort of digital abstractions with them. Um, this one's probably a fan favorite. <laughs> a lot of people like this one is, you know, baby Jesus playing Nintendo on <laughs> Mary. Uh, probably a little sacrilegious um, to some, but uh, I do like to treat my, um, subject matter with uh with respect um you know it's more of like a playful uh playful exploration um not like you know uh not trying to be insulting at all um so these are these are all based on images that um that i took or that i found most of the time like i saw these are models that actually modeled for me um let's see here i'm gonna go through kind of quickly so i started getting more into 
uh, I know everyone's kind of going through the same thing right now. We're kind of going through a dark time, you know, in general. So I kind of uh, started to pull back on some of the more cerebral stuff and got really into um, digital abstraction. And I'm going to try the Instagram one more time because that's where all the digital stuff is right now. Um, let me see how quickly I can remember my... Um, Da, 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 da. Somebody want to play something? Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm a mess. Uh, I, I pretty much say a mess. But um, uh... you know, I think I think that's actually fairly consistent across most artists. <laughs> and I'm not sure too many of us are not messes. <laughs> oh, that makes me feel so much better. Um, actually, because... if you just want to show your feed, if you go to textpressionism.com, then the um, artist page, there's a link to it from there. Genius. All right. Um, also, it seems like we have a lot of people that either lived in or are from Georgia. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I saw you, that. You I was... click the, um, the little hamburger thing on the top right there, the menu tab. Um, hamburger? The red, the red three lines. Weird. The yeah, the menu, right the menu. There, there you go. Yeah. The menu, there yeah. go. And then the second one, artists. Okay. And this page was recently reorganized, so you got to kind of scroll all the way down to get to the U.S. Oh, yeah. It's gorgeous. Uh, uh, it was nice to actually see like where everyone was from too. Um, yeah. So I, I love this arrangement. Georgia starts with a little G. And yeah, then... I actually, I grew up in Lawrenceville and lived in Norcross before moving oh, to Virginia. Oh, oh Lord. Apparently you need to be logged in. To... Uh, <laughs> I'm going to try one more on time. If it doesn't, I'll see what uh, I can find drag. on the website. Most of the recent stuff is on my, um, is on my Instagram. I haven't kind of put it on my website yet because I've been slacking. Um, well, if okay, you can't if you can't get in, we, we you can just um we can view your um yeah we can view your Instagram yeah. on our um, own if it need be. Okay. Uh. Well, yeah. just uh, am I am I still good on time? I can I think I can probably throw out another thirty seconds. <laughs> sure. Go, go for, for it. it. Okay. Thank you guys for cooperating with me. It's uh it's been a day. Um. So this is my website. I've been playing around with uh, After Effects as well, and kind of creating these all of these motion graphics and strange things on my website. I create myself. Um. I'm really weird about collaborating with other people. Like I like to do it, but when it's something really personal, I'm just like, nah, let me see what I can do. And uh, it pushes me to learn new things. Um. So all these little motion graphics, and then um, but yeah, kind of in this sort of dark place that we're kind of in. I started to like really shut down. So I kind of you know, spent a lot of time in bed and it's just like, well, you know, I still want to create. So uh, I actually started doing things on Ibis Paint on my phone. Um, so a lot of this, a lot of abstraction, a lot of uh, layering and sort of strange things. And I've been able to kind of tap into a more emotional space than a, um, <laughs> than a uh, kind of cerebral space, like thinking about all these heavy things, you know, I can kind of just react and play. Um, so I've really been enjoying um doing some of these more abstract works this is not abstract that's just fun <laughs> so just some of the digital work that i've done um and i know i'm scrolling kind of quickly but uh go look at it later <laughs> um but yeah just like i said just kind of playing with uh with some of the uh with some of the technology and i think oh that's the one i was looking for me um yeah, just lots of layering, um, lots of uh, exploration and kind of just trying things and, and, and being forgiving. And uh, I think that's I think that's it. Uh, besides that Instagram flub, I think I did OK. <laughs> uh, it forget. happens. So uh, uh, that's me. Um, ta -da. Awesome. All right. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much for sharing. OK. Um, so that is our five presenters for uh, this this week's salon. Thank you so much for your participation and your works. Um, hopefully you guys come back, not scared away. <laughs> um, so now we will move on to the next segment of our salon. Um, it's uh, something new this time around called a planning session. So do, we, do you want to do the, the quick intros? first maybe uh, uh, before we get into that oh story. right right i had almost yeah. forgotten about that yeah sorry um so quick intros for like everybody or anybody yeah, that wants like, to introduce you know, themselves I was thinking just um you know so that if anyone who's here for their first time wants to just say hello to the group and introduce themselves let us know where you're 
dialing in from and you know if you want to paste your website address into the chat um, that at least you know allows everyone to get up on the camera for a minute if you want to and we can check out you know who's in the room um, you know it's completely voluntary um, or not <laughs> you know uh, yeah I guess we could do that um, uh, so if you if you would like to go ahead and introduce yourself i know we walked over this um earlier um please go ahead and raise your hand um use that reaction and then we will get to you uh, the thumbs up the raise the hand raise um it is it just it's a, it's a button that says raise hand there we go okay anybody else want to okay so we have all right Oh, it does not go in order, or does it? We'll see. I think it. Do, I think it does, right? Or it whoever... looked like it was, and then it 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 jumped. <laughs> gotcha. All right. Um. Okay. So we just start at the. Are you seeing Gregory at the top on your? Uh, Gregory is at the top right corner for me. You want me to just go ahead then? Yeah, go for it. Yeah. So uh, my name is Gregory Hill. I live in uh, Chagrin Falls, which is a small suburb in Northeast Ohio outside of Cleveland. And uh, I do, I'm an algorist. I do algorithmic art. Um, I kind of move all over the place between representational and abstract based on just what I'm going with at the time and i will post links in the chat room and i'd love to present uh maybe in the future when i have time to put something together yeah, and thanks right. for, for doing this this is fascinating <laughs> that's what that's part of the reason why we do it well i appreciate it yeah no problem so is that is that all you have to um share or yeah for this time i think next time i'll put something together and i'd love to do a presentation okay yeah and definitely you know paste your web web link or your Instagram um, into the chat so we could at least check out um, yeah check out your stuff I will do that cool. all right thank you Gregory all right moving down the list we've got Brandon Gellis hi yes thank you and thanks for not yep. butchering my last name um great job <laughs> by the way uh, thank you. Yes, this has been really exciting and great. And I actually uh, really want to know if I could have one of these sessions during a class and introduce my students to all of you. Um, I'm a professor at the University of Wyoming. I teach graphic design and digital technology, emergent technology. I also teach classes sometimes in computer science. Um, and so I have the amazing opportunity of getting to teach and I get paid to make my art too. Um, which is unbelievable. I love it. And um, I consider myself to be an artist, um, a maker, and a teacher. Um, so most of my curriculum is around the use of or development of new technologies and approaches, or how to take design software and use it in atypical or not, not necessarily intended formats. Um, also multimodal. And so um, Roz and other people talked about, you know, bringing um, artifacts and iconography and typography and digital design and algorithms in. And so I really encourage my students to explore a variety of um, uh, mixing of media and exploration. exploration. Um, I'm new to the group and this is great. Thank you very much. Um, Thank I you for joining us. Yeah, here is my website and my Instagram and yeah. All right. Okay. <laughs> Sounds good. And again, thank you for being here. Can't, uh, can't wait to actually be in back in a classroom setting, so to speak. <laughs> <Other fat. laughs> right. All right. So next up, I think we have Anne. Hi. 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 Um, I'm excited to be seeing everyone in this group. I think it's such a great idea. And I've been using digital technology forever and ever. Currently, I'm using artificial intelligence to do series of works and um, selling works in the crypto art market, which has been fun. So I'd love to present and show some of those things. All right. 
Great. Actually, you're a special guest that I was uh, informed of prior to the meeting too. So I'm glad to see you here that and that you could make it. And usually I'm in Brooklyn, New York. Right now I'm in Vermont. Okay. So I'm wearing a parka indoors. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I just I wanted to add um, a, a, as a quick um, footnote uh, that um, I, I heard about Anne actually when I was trying to um, put together a proposal for the a physical show out in Southampton Arts Center. And one of the board members said, you know, this um, person, Ann Spalter, have you heard of her? And I hadn't at the time. And she said, you know, she should really be involved in the show. So I went and ordered up um, her book on Amazon, which is called The Computer and the Visual Arts, which is a large textbook, um, which was really uh, interesting. Um, I, I really enjoyed especially the the section on sort of the history of, you know, um, computer art and kind of the origins. Um, and yeah, it's, it's really awesome to have you, um, you know, as a participant in this project. So Thanks. welcome. And on that note, I'm very interested in the beginnings of computer art and with Michael Spalter, I have a, a collection that's probably the largest of its kind, private collection of early digital art. I'll put the URL in there because we have everything online for students and curators to use. Oh, wow. Awesome. Sounds thank amazing. You. Amazing. Yeah. Th well, thank you. Thank you for joining us. Thank you very much. Thank you, guys. All right. Okay. Next up, we have Denia Kazuko. Kazuko? Kazuko? Hi. Uh, it's, uh, it's Denia Kazaku. Kazaku. <laughs> okay. Sorry. <Yeah. laughs> no worries. Don't worry. Um, I just wanted to say thank you to Colin and you for inviting me to listen to this talk. I'm not an expressionism artist. Uh, I actually spoke to Colin a few days ago about something else, but he told me to listen on this and it's very interesting. So I just wanted to say hi. Um, I'm listening from Greece, so it's 10 past 10 at night here. So uh, it's why I'm not participating with the video. But um, thanks. That's all I wanted to say. And uh, congratulations to everyone on here. Hey, and thank you for joining us. Okay, um, next up, we, we have Anna. <laughs> uh, let me, you, uh, there you go, you're unmuted. Hi, I'm Anna Hamer, and I'm in Atlanta, Georgia, and I think we have some a good, strong Georgia contingent here, <laughs> which is great. <laughs> Connections. Um, I, I'm a painter and I studied graphic design. Uh, I have not ever really worked on the computer. I sort of, when, when the computer came out, I say PC before computers, I was working as a graphic designer and did not want to work on a computer. And now, and then went back to painting. And now I am a physical painter, but I'm using digital and overlaying digital with the paintings and then back from digital to paintings and in the physical realm. So Davo, I'm using your language now and you said working in physical space and the digital space. So I'm sort of yep. <laughs> bridging it and I will put my interesting, some information in here. I'm going to turn website. All right. Thank you. You're welcome and glad to have you. All right, um, moving along. Now we have uh, Elena Lipkowski. Oh, you, you are good at saying a name. Can you hear me? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, yes, I'm Elena Lipkowski and I'm living in Austin, Texas. Uh, I'm recently back to art making um, after a very long time as a, a, busy, a busy office day job, um, but I've always had art on the back burner. Um, I have some experience way back in graphic design um, I do not paint and I do not like drawing, but put a hammer in my hand and I, I've done metal smithing, I've done um, welding, I've done sculpture. I've come back into this. I officially launched last March, which was super interesting in the sense that my, my, uh, my busy day job mostly went away and gave me a lot of time to think about art. Um, so I like, I, like to, I like the juncture between craft and pixel. And um, one of the things that really gave me a boost to getting back into this 
was uh, because I didn't know much about Photoshop at all was I was listening to a um, an interview with Yo-Yo Ma on public radio several years ago. And he gloriously said, get just enough expertise to start playing and don't worry about it. And I wish I could find that interview so I could properly <laughs> quote it. So I know hardly anything about Photoshop, but I use it to the fur furthest extent of my limited knowledge. So thanks. Thank you. Thank you for uh, joining and thank you for introducing yourself to the group. Glad and, to uh, have feel you. Feel free to um, paste in a link to your oh, site if yes. you wish. Yes. Yeah, every, oh, yeah. everyone, uh, everyone that web... has spoken. Oh, sorry. Yeah, my website and my, my Instagram are on the chat. Thank you. All right. Awesome. Okay. Um, and speaking of chats, um, as you guys are posting this, I'm going to drop a link to the community Discord as, as soon as it lets me, because it's not letting me do that. Hold on. Sorry. Um, if you are unfamiliar with Discord, um, it is essentially an instant messaging, video sharing, chat. It, it's kind of an all-in-one kind of thing. It's very similar to Zoom, but it's always on. Um, so you can drop in and out of conversations at your leisure. Um, so please, please, please utilize that um, if you are so inclined. Because I kind of made it just for us to, you know, collab with, talk, have conversations. So you can also go. get there. Um, there's a link in the, the site footer um, for, uh, on techspressionism.com. It's the last social media icon um, yep. on the very bottom of the page, the one on the bottom right that looks sort of like a weird video game controller. I think, yeah. I don't know what it's, it's, it's the one that I didn't recognize <laughs> when I saw it. <laughs> Uh, Fair, fairly fairly new to a lot of people but it, it's been around for a couple of years i think now at this point for at least people that are into the gaming community and all that good stuff um okay well if if no one else wants to uh introduce themselves i guess we can move on unless we have any objections colin uh no That's okay good. sounds good all right, so now we at 3.16 p.m., we are now going into our little planning session. Um, and what we hope to do in this session, we, we want to take input from uh, people where, you know, if there's a topic that you want to talk about, we should be able to talk about it. So um, I'm not, did we, we didn't actually have any pre, like I was going to make it like pre-planned, uh, topics and then I completely forgot about it. so I dropped the ball on that and so I apologize um, no, it's all good I mean you know with the the planning meeting I think that um well there were sort of three things that I wanted to make sure that we just covered um yeah briefly like the first one is is um just about the the show in general and you know now that the 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 call for entry has closed um what I did was and we got like 1200 entries from um, over 300 artists and I ended up right. emailing everybody that submitted work through call for entry and letting them know that um, you know the final selection is going to be made from artists that are all artists listed in the the index so um, you know to and I encourage them to make themselves visible by using the hashtag um, and or you know tagging and direct messaging me at text at the text expressionism um, Instagram account, and we added a whole bunch of new people to the index as a result of that. Um, and then actually, uh, Denia um, um, and I spoke uh, about sort of the, the group as a whole, and she had some suggestions, um, uh, one of which was that she thought that the Instagram feed should be um, a little bit more tightly curated. And that kind of spurred me to change up a little bit about how the work is presented on Instagram. So now instead of just me randomly reposting work continually throughout the day and night, which is driving my wife insane. She thinks <laughs> I'm an insane Instagram addict, which I am at this point. Um, I've tried to, to structure it a little bit so that um, each day there's one featured artist and three of the featured artist works are presented each day to form one row um, in the Instagram grid. So that way it looks a little bit more cohesive. 
it gives each featured artist um, you know a bit more exposure but also it allows us to start you know pulling artists out of the index that you know might be good for the exhibition um, so that's one thing and then you know Patrick um, is going to be co-curating the show with me so we still haven't really come up with a firm um, date I've been working with Jan Swinburne and Clive Holden on um, you know getting a uh, a presentation format together for um, video work within Kunst Matrix, which you know is kind of a work in progress, but we're making right. we're making some headway there. And um, you know the other two things really were the the collaboration project, which Devante mm -hmm. came up with, and then the interview um, uh, project, which Roz came up with. And I'll let you guys kind of you know take it from there and. Um, you know, don't let the group yeah. know about those things. Yeah, um, I'll go ahead and talk about the uh, collaboration project. So originally this project started a couple months ago, kind of at this point, but it's all good. Um, the, the main idea um, behind it was that I was drawing inspiration from um, the, you know, the kind of collaborations that Basquiat did with his work. And, you know, he was very much inspired by jazz which there was a lot of jazz collaborations going on. He's like, I want to do that with, but with art. So he collabed with a couple of other different artists. Um, I want to say it was Warhol and Basquiat that had a collab. Yeah, that famous collab. And so me studying this man's work very closely and kind of almost like at this point, I, I want to say that I'm honestly kind of patterning myself after his work and like the kind of messages that he's doing um, and incorporating that into my style. But um, anyway, so I, I, I see these collab this collaboration project as a conversation between artists. So there'll be a group of two people, a pair of artists, and they'll submit either submit work back and forth with each other um, with one work being you know the, the topic, so to speak, and another work, either an edited version of their original work or brand new work entirely being a response to that initial work. Because, you know, art is message, like it's, it, you're communicating um, words, meanings through your imagery or um, your audio or what have you. And to have an artist respond back to you, it's like, oh, this is what, this is what, you, this is what spoke to me and this is what I'm responding to. That's the nature of the collaboration. So um, the end result of that project um, is going to be like a mini art show slash exhibition that we are also trying to plan on having in Kunst Matrix. Um, the first one, we have 10 participants. It's still technically ongoing. Um, there's been a little delays and that sort of thing, but um, I was talking with Colin earlier um, about opening up the second one already. So to get that started, because a lot of people are very interested in participating now. So um, in Discord, if you go on there, there is now a new channel that I created yesterday um, for essentially early signups for the second collab event that we have going on. Um, and I'm going to record all that information into the uh, Gmail account that I set up just for collaboration submissions and all that good stuff. So um, if you want, please, I, Please, I encourage you go go to the Discord and hop in that channel and say that you want to participate in the next collab event because it's been it's been fun so far. Um, the we have one completed pair out of the five, but it's all good. Still, still in the beginning process is still learning what works and what doesn't, but it's it's really been truly fulfilling so far. So please go ahead and volunteer, sign up. Davo, I have uh, one quick suggestion about that. I think that maybe in order for us to to get a show up, you know, which I think we definitely should do, and this is a really good opportunity um, and a good um, way to structure the material, I think, for our first sort of group exhibition is mm -hmm. to set a date, you know, that we want that that's a firm deadline. And right. any pairings that get their work in by that time get to be in this show you know and because right. i mean you know like there might be people that have other commitments and stuff comes up and i think that you know in the interest of just getting something up and and you know the way i envision it is um you know and uh, we're going to have a kunst matrix account that we can use on an ongoing basis so i i would say 
the best way to utilize that is to always have a show up, you know, and while right. there's one up, we're putting material together as a group to make the next show so that when they, you know, rotate, there's always something to see that group members are creating because there's no shortage of talent or content, you know, nope, in, in the group. So I think that, do you guys agree? And if you do, what do you think is a reasonable date to set for, um, I guess it would be, we would need two dates. One would be the deadline to get the, for the materials in. Yeah. And I, I think the interviews don't necessarily need to be part of the deadline. I think right. if people are able to pull off the interview component, that's great. But I feel like that might be a hindrance also, like in some people might be less, you know, uh, inclined to do that, that sort of an exercise. So I think, you know, the, the important thing is that we get, um, you know, a, a number of images. I don't know, Devante, if you, I know you had mentioned like possibly four images per pair for yeah. the show. Um, and, and then, you know, um, we can kind of have, we could have multiple chapters of this concept, I think, but I think, um, you know, I, I would love to get something up sooner rather than later. So right. we have something visible to the public prior to the juried exhibition, you know, where it's really the people that are actively participating and showing up to these things that are going to get, um, you know, some visibility out of it. Uh, um, how, sorry. Um, how, do we get in, how do we find this on Discord? And how, oh, uh, yeah. on, well, if you, I'm not sure if you're using it on mobile or if you're on desktop, are you? Uh, I'm on both, but right now I'm on desktop. Okay, so if you're on desktop, um, if you look on the left side, there is a list of um, what their, their channels. So their chat channels. So under the general discussion, I mean, under the discussion um, sex, subsection, there's a um, channel called uh, Collab Discussion. And you can go under there and then um, uh, post that you want to be a participant and you'll see everyone else so far that's also interested. So are you seeing that or no? Would you be able to share your screen maybe? Yeah, I can do that. Thank you. Do, 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 do. Me one screen two. Are you guys seeing this? Yep. Yep. Okay. So this is the main section and then the discussion section. It's going to be right here under collab. So it's the third one. Do I have to be invited to join the um, Discord channel? Um, that link that I introduced in the um, put in the chat uh, should work. Okay. I think you just need to register, and you can you can yeah. click the link on the site footer too to yeah. get there. I think okay, that perfect. I, I, um, and then you just need to register, and then so Davo, what do you think is reasonable as far as like a deadline? Like if we could get a date, sort of set, you know, while we're all here in the session, that might be good, just so you know people know like. Because I know you did set a deadline, and then one pairing did their homework, and I'm I'm guilty of not <laughs> getting my homework in either. Patrick and I are on our last one. I promise. I was working on the last, you know, back and forth round with him uh, yesterday, actually. So, but I think it's all know, good. If we, can, oh. if we can set a date based on like you know what what might be reasonable, whatever that I, is. How how I kind of originally envisioned it was like a once a month kind of deal. So at the end of the month. Um, we'd have submissions and then after that, then at some point in the following month, then we have the show that can be going to uh, Kunst Matrix. So is that, does that sound reasonable enough? Like a whole, a month, like at the end of the month as a deadline or maybe input? I think it sounds well, pretty good. So, so the end of January, you mean like, so 10 yeah. days from now would be a deadline to get work in by? Yeah, I mean, yeah. I, well, I mean, the existing pairings have had like a, month <laughs> a while, or two, you know, a good <laughs> amount of notice at this point. So, like, right. if you don't, you know, there's always the next one. I guess you know, it's incentive to uh, to to get it done. Um, right. I think that's reasonable, you know. And then, so you know, Davo, you're you're the curator, so you know, <laughs> I'm expecting you to say at the end of the month, okay, this is the cutoff. Yeah, well, I was actually I was actually planning on writing and, up an email today and sending it out to the rest of the participants, like, 
hey, it's about that time, so. <laughs> right on. Cool. Yeah, and, you know, I, I think with the interview um, piece, like, you know, we had talked about each pairing interviewing each other. Like, we could always add that on or, y you know, I think that sometimes that that might actually, you know, slow the process down to the point that it prevents the show from going up, you know. Um, but I, I would envision it as something where, um, like, I'll create a page on the site for, for the collab project. And then each pairing can have, you know, their interviews there if they if they exist. Um, and within Kunstmatrix, but each work is clickable through to a URL. So you know we can just figure out, put our heads together, and figure out the best way to present this. Um, right. Oh, it looks like Michael has a question. Yeah. One second. All right. Okay, so are we going to choose our own collaborators, or are we going to be assigned, or, or how that does is, it work? Do we just aim at each other? <laughs> <laughs> that is a good question. Uh, I'm glad you brought that up. In the first batch, I kind I personally assign people um, who they're going to be working with, um, but I also did say um, before I did that, I was like, if anyone actually has somebody that they'd like to work with among the current participants, that they're free to reach out to that person and be like, hey, you want to pair up for a collab? Um, so either or, either you can, you among the current participants, you can select who you'd want to work with um, or, or ask them if they'd want to work with you or I can assign you, so. So is that, is that satisfactory X answer for you or? Well, I, I, I like the idea of being assigned so that okay, so there aren't any loose ends. Right. Plus, you know, it's, uh, it's the process of discovery. Right. Okay. And Roz? Um, Davo, can people see who the collaborators are now? Uh, um, I'm, I'm going to make like an ongoing list of who we currently have, and that will probably also be posted in Discord, but I'm probably also going to, um, when either today or tomorrow, um, I'm going to need to collect you guys' emails so that I can put those on the contact list for the collaboration email so that we can also have that correspondence too. So um, Yeah, it, actually in the email that you guys all got with the Zoom link, that should yeah. have all of that information in there, like the list of the current collaborator pairings. And also it'll have Davo's Gmail that he set up. So yeah. like if you're in the Zoom right now and you want to participate, um, you could email Davo directly through that address. What was it? It was like- um, It was Techspression uh, Collab. Hold on, I will copy and paste it. Yeah, that might be the- that might be easy because it's 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 thing. actually kind of a long one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of a long one all right all right and i'm about to drop that in the chat right now as soon as ah it's not actually letting me copy it technical difficulties happen all right, and that is the email. Or no, oh, hold on, it's sending it directly. Hold on, there we go. There we go. All right, so that is the email um, for correspondence. So if you are interested, please email me so I can add you to the participant list as well. Um, so I'm collecting. Oh, and Davo, I had another question, just sort of in terms of the way the work is going to be presented. So yes, like the, all of this work right now is going to be obviously digital work and right um i know kunst matrix i believe has a uh i think it's like a 5000 by 5000 pixel sort of recommended limit as far as the pixel dimensions of an image yeah um what do you, what are your thoughts so with each image when you're placing it within the space you also specify a physical size that it shows the work as on the wall so do right. you think that all the work should be sort of consistent in terms of, you know, if it was produced, if it was physically produced, it would be within four by three by four feet, four by four feet. You know, I think that maybe if we have some consistency as far as the size across the show, I mean, it's sort of, 
I don't know if any other artists have had any kind of discussion about if there is a perceived physical size when they're creating their their collaborative work. I mean, Patrick and I just used 5,000 pixels because that was as big as you could go and just, you know, but I, then when you place the work in the VR space, you have to say it's X inches by X inches or X centimeters by X right. centimeters. So what do you think about that? Uh, I, I do think that there does ne necessarily kind of need to be a minimum size um, that is submitted. Um, the the issue though is like how 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 small like can Kunst Matrix display? Because I don't want to use like the like that minimum as the minimum for submission, but like what what is the like? Well, I think like file size wise, I mean even a five thousand by five thousand pixel image, if you save it as like a medium size JPEG, it's it's really only a couple megs. I mean it's nothing yeah. crazy. I'm I'm really more talking about like the sort of w when you when you actually place it, it's you know you could say I'd like it to be 12 inches by 12 inches oh, or 12 okay. feet by 12 feet. Right. How big is it going to appear on the wall in the in the virtual space? And I think like you know for the show to look cohesive and good, right. it should all be sized relatively okay. the same. So you're, it's not like some pairings work is going to be giant on the wall. And right. Then another pairing's work is no, going that's, to be tiny on the wall. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's that's a so, that's a fair point to bring up. Um, uh, do we? I mean, I think that the 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 room is sized to be comparable to like a general sort of standard physical space, right. maybe eight foot ceilings or something. So yeah. I think like if all of the work fits within four feet by four feet or something, it'll be as if you're in a physical space with fairly large wall pieces, you know what I yeah. mean? Versus presenting them as, you know, what they might be in actual printed size, yeah. you know? Right. Because I think like even a 5,000 by 5,000 pixel image, if you're printing it at 300 DPI, you know, you end up with a fairly small yeah. object. You do. Ultimately. Can I give input on this? Sure. Uh, uh, sure. There are some, there might be some people where the artist is going to have a preference. For instance, I, I do a lot of head and shoulder portraits. And so I do imagine them to be life size, which for me is about two feet by two feet. So there, there could be people who do care about the size of their work. Mm. That's a good point. I mean, maybe, maybe we ask each pairing to provide a physical sizing, you know, for their submission. So that way it's decided upon by the artists in the pairing, you know, yeah. that probably makes the most sense. Yeah. Um, and I, I, you know, they, the file does not need to actually reflect what it would need to be if it was printed at full resolution at Correct. that size, Correct. you know, so because we're, we're not producing these things um, that's that's a that's a good idea i think i, I think that's question. oh um i think roz had something okay. to say first and then you can go ahead yeah um having participated we're well we're still participating nagin and i have something going here that we need to finish I i'm glad you're putting a deadline because we just need to get our asses in gear <laughs> <laughs> just, you know once you don't have it and you get into other stuff you go oh we got to get back to that Right. Um, but um, so I'm glad of that. And but the other thing is, I think that we had a a, a, a um, prescribed uh, ten inches by ten inches for the first one, didn't we? I think we did. That's what it was. We I thought it was, was a tentative ten inches by ten inches at that time. Yeah, but, which I think is kind of nice, maybe for the first one. But anyway, I just wanted to make sure I got that right. Yeah, and uh, I mean, it. We're still kind of in the learning phase for how this is supposed to work or how 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 we're going to proceed with this so i mean it, we're still we're still learning how how this goes so it's all good yeah the other thing in kunst matrix is you can scale the imagery as well so even if the physical dimensions would be like a foot by a foot you can scale up as long as you know as long as the pixels are there uh kunst matrix allows you to actually scale the artwork in the space so it looks larger on the wall Right. 
Yeah, I uh, would say definitely, you know, if if for, you know, phys- like sort of technical issues notwithstanding, if the work can be created somewhere around the 5,000 by 5,000 pixel size, it's going to give the most flexibility as far right. as the size of virtual presentation. Yeah, I agree, obviously. <laughs> right. You know, and, and even a 5,000 by 5,000 pixel image really is not very heavy file yeah, size wise if you're saving it out as a JPEG. Yeah. And we can maintain that aspect ratio too once it gets into the Kunst matrix. So it's probably also not going to be a big deal at the end of the day. Uh, Brandon, you had something that you wanted to contribute or? Just having had used um, Kuhn's Matrix also, I was just going to mirror that kind of stuff and just say okay. maybe one option is just when you, if you set up a tentative um, gallery space, maybe just give each pairing a measurement that their work together cannot exceed. Because there may be a perspective, there may be a discussion of macro micro or juxtaposition. So maybe one artist wants to do something tiny, one artist wants to do something much larger. Um, because I'm actually also using Kuhn's Matrix for my students. At the end of each class, their capstone is going to be in a virtual gallery since we're not able to be here. So it's the same thing. I just give them set parameters. And one other option is in Unity, I'm just designing um, a, a multi-level gallery. And every, every student gets a room that is this big to set up how they want for virtual space. So just an, just an idea. Thank mm -hmm. you. Are right. you bringing Thank the you. Unity model into Kunst Matrix? I'm not sure. Um, I might just host the Unity model on my website. Um, uh, similarly to how, well, no, not similar to how someone would link to Kunst Matrix or embed it, but basically just have like possibly have like a, a, a 3D image of each room that the students would work in. Um, cause there's 25 students in that class and they're each creating a virtual reality in a um, room with text and characters, the designing and background. So I don't have an exact answer. <laughs> cool. Yeah. I know that someone had brought up that you can, you can, yeah. you know, create your own spaces and we haven't and I, completely solidified the, yeah. the format, you know, the layout for the jury show, but definitely it'll be broken up into rooms, most yeah. likely, mm -hmm. you know, along the lines of figurative versus abstract work and, and things yeah. of that nature. I'm happy to help if, if you need, um, but also when I've emailed them, they're super responsive and super helpful. Um, Kunz Matrix, they are in Germany. So it's the day, you know, it's, it's later in the day, but right. they're really nice and responsive. And I think they'll even walk you through setting up really custom layouts if you want, like rooms customly. Okay. Yeah, that's definitely something we, we will definitely need to explore her a bit later on. So once we get to that point, um, yeah, and the collab I think is a really good opportunity for to experiment know, and members, yeah, yeah. that want to be involved in in this aspect because the jury show is just one show. I mean, right. you know, I think that anybody that has an idea for a show, like you know, there were a lot of people that wanted to submit video work, and when I originally set the call for entry up, I wasn't even sure if if you'd be able to place, you know, if it was possible to place video work within Kunst Matrix. So I didn't check the box that said allow video submissions. Um, so I ended up having people that wanted to submit video work just send me um, links to unlisted Vimeo or YouTube videos via email along with their artist statement and, um, and you know, got a bunch of submissions there. But I think that um, down the road, you know, if we can actually figure out the best way to present the work, which at this point it's looking like a very short clip with a link to the full res video mm -hmm. somewhere else that's just embedded flat on a page. Uh, I think a show like Texpressionism in Motion or something along those lines of all time-based work would be really interesting because there's a lot of really interesting video art that um, people are tagging with the hashtag. Uh, I've noticed that when I repost video work, a lot of times you end up with a black square with a play button and, and whatever the sort of thumbnail frame that the artist selected doesn't translate in the repost. So it doesn't really look good as a reposted video in the feed, but a lot of the video work is, is pretty incredible. Um, anyway, just putting that out there. But. Right. 
Uh, we are actually, we got like 15 more minutes before we hit that four, four o'clock uh, marker. I know Roz wanted to talk more about the interview section, so I'm going to give the floor to her real quick. Hi, everybody. Yeah, uh, and they kind of, this the, it kind of sags. Thanks, Davo. Um, mm -hmm. uh, it kind of sags because uh, into this one naturally uh, as well, because in the beginning, the, the early collaborations that Davo set up, one of the suggested things that you would do was to have an interview with each other in case you haven't read the specs yet. And so Nagin and I had one. I mean, she was over in Abu Dhabi and here I am, you know, in New York. Uh, and that, that was really a wonderful way to get to know each other. But now that we are starting an interview series, I kind of think that, uh, you know, if you don't, I agree with Colin that if you don't get to that, you know, it's really about an art collaboration. It's kind of right. nice to chat, but you can always chat via email and, you know, we all have full lives. So I got it. And I did find that our interview, I looked back on it, it's very interesting and cordial with each other. But that's why we thought it might be nice to have an interview thing where it's longer than five minutes, where you really get to know a little bit more about an artist. But it is, I will now, uh, I think I'm going to share my screen. That's all right, Davo. I'm going to go yep. ahead and do that. It's, this is not going to be my art. This is just the interview, what we came up with Colin, just kind of a suggested guideline, because I'm not going to be the interviewer every time. <laughs> Hello. Right. I have a life too, even though it is interesting and fun. Um, but I, these are suggested guidelines for you to pick someone else in the group and make a, a, a you know, do one yourself. Um, I'm just going to share my screen this time. I'll remember to click share. I always forget to do that. <laughs> anyway, all right. So I have it on the screen. Can everybody see it? Yep. Great. So I'm just going to read it. Um, uh, tech specialist artist interview series suggested. These are suggested, but I would strongly suggest we stick to it or if we think something's really missing, of course, like everything in this group, which I like, it's very, um, it, it's a group, you know, it's mm -hmm. not an hierarchical kind of thing. So a uh, length, we thought though, 15, 20 minutes, probably enough. Um, uh, you know, attention span nowadays is about five seconds. So that's probably good. Interviewer begins and sets the stage. I mean, this is just for people who might want a little help in thinking about how to interview someone. Uh, and here's an example. Today's January 22nd. I'm going to be interviewing Colin this Friday. So he's going to be the first interview. So that'll be fun for you to watch and see. And we'll also figure out things that might be missing and better in the future. Um, my name is Ross Diamond. I'm an artist who's been working with technology. Introduce who you are just a little bit because it's about the other person, but they still want to know a little about you. And I'm here today with tech expressionism founder and artist Colin Goldberg. Uh, you know, find out from your other person how they want to be introduced. Uh, one, tell us about your background really quickly, where you're born, where you live and practice now, and your cultural influences. Um, two, what made you become an artist? Or when did you know this is what you wanted to do? What, who were your influences? Three, before you, we look at your work, tell us about your process. Has a technology played a role in your work? Is there an aha moment or cathartic experience that was a formative event in your artistic development? I know a lot of us have that. And those of us who may not, it may be more of an evolutionary kind of thing. But I think that that place is where people get interested um, more. Um, what, what made you do, what, what, what made you get into this? Um, and tying it to your life. Please share your screen and show some of your work as a way for us to see your work how it evolved artistically and technically. No more than 10 pieces. Again, all suggestions. Five, what interests you about to expressionism? Six, what are you working on now? Share a screen again or keep it on. How do you see the future of art? Um, I think these are a good, pretty good set of questions. And um, I guess Devo, what do you, uh, or Colin, where do you think we should post these for people? In, in Discord? Um, I mean, I could I could definitely set up a page on the site too for interviews where we could have a yeah. downloadable document, and then once there there are interviews that are generated, I can embed them on that page the way that I embedded the salon. And I think the you know the the videos will live um, both you know within our YouTube channel and also on individual pages on the site, so people can get to them quickly either way and you know um at some point if anybody who's a video um person and and is really into youtube wants to help you know curate um the youtube channel and or any other social channels you know feel free to to just drop me a line 
I know like Skojo, um, who uh, he actually had had some medical issues he had to deal with today, but mm. he volunteered to uh, you know help out with the Pinterest um, account for tech expressionism. So he's going to start like tagging people, um, and you know anybody who has an interest or sort of facility with a particular platform, um, certainly you know feel free to jump in and you know if, if you if you so inclined you know to and when we'll add them to our social links um we have you know uh a bunch already i mean the twitter um account right now is just hooked up through this if then then that service to repost instagram images but um you know if there's someone who's really active on twitter for instance i'm not but someone who's kind of up on what's going on and wants to retweet and run the account you know by all means um, I'm happy to get it off out of my hands. Um, and that can be said for any of the other platforms also. Right. I, I did want to say the interview, uh, I'm not a videographer. Um, uh, even my animated pieces are really going inside a painting. They're not videos, but I don't know if I read this, but the suggested thing was that you just do it on Zoom with someone. And you know, you keep it, that's what's wonderful about this thing. It's a little casual. You don't have to make this a beautifully crafted, you don't have to do this video and go back and edit it. it. It's kind of a fun, especially with the guideline questions. You know, you, you, you just kind of a casual conversation with someone else and put it up, uh, you know, uh, record your Zoom session and, uh, and, and give it that makes it a video. So that's a really easy way for, because no one would do it if we had to get to a full production, you know, uh, video. Um, mm -hmm. or people might, but some people might be able to do it. Um, but uh, does anybody have any questions before we get going here um, about it? Well, I guess we'll just jump in and see how it goes with Colin yeah. as, our, as he said, the guinea pig. <laughs> I'll be the guinea pig. <laughs> but, you know, and, and I would say like, you know, the way that I, I kind of, when, when you proposed this, I thought, well, that's kind of cool because I, I bet that like everybody in the group could scroll through the artist list and find somebody that they're like, wow, that person's work looks really interesting. I want to, you know, I want to find out more about it. Or they look at their site and they're like, huh, that's, you know, that's, that's a, a cool way of looking at things or whatever. So that way, you know, anybody that really has an interest in another artist that's in the group can then drop them a line and ask them if they want to do an interview. And then once it's recorded, um, I'm trying to think of the best way to actually get it published. I mean, probably it just, you know, you could um, message me or email me directly and I can add you as a, uh, you know, an editor or admin or somebody that basically has upload privileges to the YouTube channel. And that might be the simplest way rather than having someone as like, you know, a point person where it needs to be drop boxed and then uploaded. Yeah. I'm cool with like giving anybody that wants to take the time to produce and record an interview uh, upload privileges, you know, um, so. And yeah. also, I, yeah, thanks, Colin. And you know, when you first start with someone on Zoom, you don't have to record right away. You can, it's a nice way to get to know somebody a little and say, okay, are we ready? Mm -hmm. Are we, are you set? And, and then you record and you could try it again if you want, you know, but uh, it's, uh, I think it's a nice way to do it. And Roz, is, is, are there any resources or links that you know of that, that I could add to the um, interview page too that just explains from a technical standpoint, like how somebody who's never done a Zoom recording or- Oh, like maybe the right steps, how to get into Zoom, what to, I mean- Yeah, that I think that the, you know, the questions are definitely important, but I think the technical component of how to actually, you know, how someone who's never produced a video interview on a platform like this can just follow a set of instructions and end up with a file, you know, and I could even work with you on that. So sure, why don't we do that? Include the yeah. upload by, by the way, um, just, just putting this out there. Um, if you want to, if you want to do an interview and you don't necessarily want to use Zoom, um, I can, I can actually, um, if you go into Discord and you, you stream just like this, like your audio video and that can be streamed. I can actually capture that recording too. Like mm -hmm. I have the software to do that from Discord. Like it's not um, a functionality in Discord itself. It's software that I use anyway, but I can also do that in case somebody doesn't want to actually use uh, Zoom to do anything. Yeah, like so the just, 
video recorder actually you know maybe. yeah so if you want to do your interview in discord and i can record it for you and so i can pass that off to um, colin or whomever um, wants to upload it to the youtube that can be also an option one thing i was thinking about too Roz, um when we were talking about i have this to project go sorry, is... in about two minutes i have another zoom and i just okay I, yeah, I, I was just thinking it. like if 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 artists are able to present work off of their site and then they say it's accessible at whatever the web address is then it's gonna drive more interest i think because then users at home can go to your site check mm -hmm. out that section of work and explore it a little more further you know what i mean I say that again you, sharing you off your desktop your site? you you say your site during the video is that what you're saying or you know if if you have work on your site that you you want to share i think that might actually work better as a way to show the world your work because uh, rather than sharing work off of your local machine because oh, then yeah. users at home could go to your website and check it out further you know it's, yeah. it's using it would so be using your URL. site as a platform that's a good idea for presentation yeah yep okay i i've enjoyed being here i'm sorry i gotta get to my poetry soon <laughs> it's all Thanks, good Roz. bye see ya all right um I do believe we have covered everything or mostly everything that we wanted to cover, if if I have that correct, right, Colin? Or... I think so. I mean, we had this whole other component planned of like some sort of topic, but ultimately it seemed like there's enough <laughs> actual sort of functional pieces that, that, you know, I feel like the, the group needs to make these sort of decisions together. Right. So it's a good use of time, I think. And does everyone feel like the way that the time has been divided up in the session makes sense as far as five artists roughly five-ish minutes per artist and then intros and then sort of a you know functional conversation yes i think that seems good okay so this is probably going to be the format going forward for the rest of these salons so that's that's what the aim was just have a more cohesive, more organized uh, way to conduct these meetings uh, every two weeks. But if um, everyone is on board and doesn't have any critiques, or if you do, let us know. <laughs> but um, with that being said, I think we can probably close out this meeting, like the formal part of the meeting. Um, and Davo, I just wanted to say thank you very much for moderating. You did an amazing job. Well, thank um, you. <laughs> if you. If you're interested in continuing modding, you know, by all means, uh, I'm happy <laughs> to, you know. It, it gives it gives me a reason to use my uh, my radio voice, as it's been called, apparently. <laughs> all right, then. <laughs> so, um, that being said, um, it's about that time to close out the meeting. You're welcome to hang out um, and chat after the uh, recording ends, which I'm about to end now. Um, it's been a great session so far, and we will reconvene Thank in two weeks. <laughs> um, and until then, you're welcome to join us on Discord, which I did drop the link. If you need it again, I'll drop it again. And um, yeah, recording is going to end now as soon as I found the button. There we go.